Well, hey there, welcome, and my name's Josh. This is the Embodied Josh podcast, where we talk about mental health and how it applies to artists. Thanks so much for all the support I've gotten for this on Patreon to help make this podcast a reality. If you want to support what I do and help determine the future of podcast topics, be sure to go check that out. So something I've been wanting to do is start interviewing artists in the industry because I think that they have a really valuable perspective that I don't have. Um, and I'm really interested to see things that they could share. So I'm kind of on this vendetta to find as many artists in the industry who are willing to talk with me and then pick their brain a bit. So the first one who volunteered to be the first interview, the guinea pig, he's my, my good friend, Andre David. He's a concept artist over at GadgetBot. I met him actually through this channel. Um, he was one of my very first viewers who like commented on videos and like actually like talked to me. And then when I stalked him on Instagram, I realized he was like way better at art than me and had like thousands of followers. And I was like super intimidated. But we've been friends for like like three ish years now, pretty much as long as the channel's been around. So and he's been helping me and like giving me art reviews and stuff. So I asked him, hey, would you mind letting me talk to you on a podcast? Um, because they actually interviewed me on 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 their podcast. He and he and some of his friends. And he said, sure. So here he is. Uh, Andre David, welcome. Thanks so much for for taking hey, the time to chat with me. Thank you for having me. It's well, that introduction for sure puts a lot of pressure in my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> well, nah. I'll, I'll try to give you those valuable nuggets of information that Perfect. have been so hard. No, I'm sure now you I I have zero doubt. Um the first question I have for you is just like what got you into art in the first place? Was it like was it a show that you saw? Was it you know a game that you played? Like why why do you why are you doing this and not something else? Well, um, that's something that I've been thinking about, like, basically my whole life, actually. Mm. Um, thankfully, I got, I was raised in an environment that focused on something like, you should do something that you love for a mm. living. So my whole childhood and, like, teenage years were in the search of that something, right? Mm. And when I was five years old, I have this, like, I remember this very clearly. I was watching this TV show called Max Steel. And I'm mm. not sure if you know what that is, but it's sort of like a kid's cartoon show that was made to promote a toy, which mm. was one of those action figures, right? And it was this sort of like teenage spy guy that used to wear a bunch of like accessories and gadgets and things that you would clear, clearly see that they were made for, for in order to like sell more toys to kids. <laughs> but the TV show was awesome, right? And... And I looked and they had this animation of like a wireframe rotating while mm -hmm. the character got equipped with everything that he was using that mission. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. That's what I want to do. I want to be those, the guy that creates those things. Those deconstructions of like those like those FX breakdowns and like movies and stuff or like the character models and like you see like the wireframes and the rotations and like those videos, like those deconstruction ones are so cool. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah, and I'm sure, like, if I would look at that today, it would look kind of funny and not as good as I remember, right? Yeah. But at that moment, I realized, oh, that's what I want to do. And then, like, I had to break down what actually is that I was liking about it. Mm -hmm. So I started thinking about um, things like, oh, it's the guy that creates those equipments that the character is using. It's an inventor, it's a scientist, someone that, like, builds things, right? Mm. So I went to that route. Mm -hmm. of um i want to go into the stem fields or science and engineering and actually making things in real life mm. and that was basically like throughout my childhood and i used to like to draw and everything like as every kid i think does but it was only like way later in life that i realized that those drawings were more than just like hobbies for me and i wanted to mix the idea of Cre being creative and inventing things and being like a well actually a designer right i just didn't know the terms for it mm. and then the art world started to be more present in my life and then i discovered like concept art in the middle of all of this and i was like okay the thing that i was looking for and never knew it existed actually like there are people that do, do that for for real right and it turned out that it was the perfect profession i think for what I was imagining when I was a kid. That's awesome. So then did you so did you go to school and get a STEM degree when you were still thinking that that's what it was? 
or did was that like early in like you know like primary school so you never actually like was this was like way before college no no like in i don't know how it works over there right but here you have what would be called uh, primary school and then high school right Mm -hmm. that comes right after and you're in brazil right yes yes so um in high school you are actually training to to take a test and choose your career path Mm -hmm. so that's when it starts to become more serious that you have to make a decision and by that point i was not drawing as much anymore but i liked video games and moves and and things of that sort especially video games i was heavily influenced by them and i was like okay i like video games and i always wanted to create stuff Mm. so what kind of field would lead me to that and i applied to do um, computer science i got into college like right after high school Mm. and then in the first couple of weeks i knew that i didn't like that at all <laughs> like i knew it would not be for me it was it was a sad moment right because you just got into high, into college and mm. you were supposed to be excited about life and the prospect of your future mm-hmm. but it was not like that at all like i liked programming but everything else was kind of like a mess and i liked the lifestyle of being kind of independent in your own although mm. still dependent of my parents right you were kind of on your own for the first time so it's all exciting it's all new new experiences mm-hmm. and i was liking everything except like the course yeah so i had to like face the fact that okay this is this really is not for me and i was spending like 12 hours of my day um inside of the apartment playing league of legends <laughs> because that was the only thing bringing me satisfaction right <laughs> and, and then i came out to my parents and i said hey um i'll quit this course this is really not for me it was a I, I mean i don't want to play it like as if it was more than it was but mm. it was a bit hard for me at the moment to face that fact right yeah and then i i came back home i had to like start studying again for applied to college again and that's when i started to think about okay what kind of creative career can i have and oh, everything that happened so far i didn't even knew about concept art right Hmm. just all without knowing the of entertainment design or design for movies and games Hmm. and and then i to be honest i think a bit about for um, because of pressure of my parents or pressure external pressure to like okay i know you want to be creative but you need to make money right Mm -hmm. because i think they're that pressure is real and it really exists and we don't want to just like dismiss everything and say that it's all fun and games go and like love life and then i i got into advertising and marketing Hmm. which was like another college it was nearby my home so i like because we didn't have a lot of money i didn't have to live there i could still live home and Hmm. commute every day to college Hmm. And it was still a little bit creative. It was kind of like that um, grounded option for you mm-hmm. to take, if that mm-hmm. makes sense, right? Yeah, like the safe option. The safe option, yeah. And it turns out that in that college, I had this teacher, which was a graphic designer teacher. And he kind of saw my drawings once that I was like doodling in school. And he motivated me, you know, he was like, oh, you are really like decent at it. Why don't you invest this kind of... Uh, career he present he um, introduced me to a couple of comic book artists people that were working for marvel and those kind of big named comics instead mm-hmm. of like the starving artist down the road he presented me to someone that was actually successful wow <laughs> and well you, you can understand right it, the idea that society has about artists it's not actually the successful guy mm-hmm. so it makes sense that you don't really think of a successful career in art right out of the get-go. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's something that, especially for me, that I wanted to do STEM, and it was not for me. I was in a, a bit lost at the moment. Mm. And then you don't even think about this career, but then someone presents to someone who's like successful to you, and you're like, oh, I never thought of that path, right? I always thought that that pathway would be like. A no no option yeah yeah no that's and... just that's absolutely insane to me that is bananas that you're in school doing this safe 
kind of creative, but totally safe, mostly boring advertising, like in between where you're like, okay, I don't want to starve, but I also don't want to hate my life. So I guess advertising can like fit that niche. And this chat of a professor looks at you and introduces you to an artist at Marvel. Like that's that that doesn't happen. That's so crazy. That's like, well, you can't like prep for that. That's so that's insane. What happened from there? What, what happened after that? The time. What happened yeah, after so that? That's when I, um, I was starting to draw more characters, right? Because uh -huh. in comic books, you draw characters all the time. Mm. And now, were you self-taught up to this about... point? You're just doodling. Yeah. You're just you're just you're yeah, just doing yeah, your own thing. Like, no formal education. You you just drew, exactly. and were self-taught because fun. you love to draw. Yeah, okay. it was something that like it was present in my life. But then like during that period in high school where I thought I wanted to do science instead of this, mm. I didn't do it at all. And then mm. when I was back in college, because it was sort of creative, I was sort of incentivized to get back at it. Mm. And at that point, I was doing like um, very small commissions for mascots or tattoo drawings or mm. things like like friend of a friend asks for a tattoo drawing. So they don't know anyone who can draw. Can you do that? It's sure. that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And he presented me to that that guy. So I started looking more videos up about character design. And mm -hmm. that's when I found out about Mark Brunet, who's mm -hmm. uh, QBrush. Yep. And I decided, like, I was super excited. I want to be a character designer, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what he was. Sure. And it, this was in the last semester of 2014. Wait, was and... this was was this after you met the Marvel guy? So you met the yeah, you met yeah. the Marvel guy, and then would he did he introduce you to Mark Burnett, like, or Actually, did he no, did he mentor no, you, uh, no. or did you just it was like not, uh, say hi at all? Okay, it, it was just like um, someone who was nice with me. You know, he didn't have like a huge presence. In okay, the sense that uh, an actual like contacting all the time or being a friend or anything. It was oh, just okay. someone who was like. Who happened to met me at the time? But I think that the impact that it had was that it showed me the possibility, right? Instead ah. of being like hugely holding hands, it it was not the case at all. It was just like I'm a friend of this guy. Hey, why don't you meet him and like talk, chat for like a couple of minutes, and then it's that way, right? Mm. And then so it's more so like I found oh. out. So go about ahead. Concept art on my own, right? Mm. Yeah, it was not really like present. If that's if that makes sense. No, that just... makes sense. I was thinking that like it... I thought it was like that that like classic like and then he mentored me and made me everything I am today. But it was more like I the fact think. like <laughs> right. But it was more so the fact that you saw somebody doing art and making a living for it and not being poor and actually being successful that like opened up your eyes to the possibilities that that even existed. Not so much that he provided like a huge mentorship or opportunity for you oh no not at all like um the opportunities came in later right mm. but i think being open to the possibility that it can be a successful career it's already like good enough for where i was in my life yeah and then after that semester i stopped having classes with this teacher and mm. it kind of like my enthusiasm fizzled down a little bit mm. And then I met this other guy, other teacher, who was hugely successful inside of the marketing field, right? In mm. advertising. Mm. And and I, I was like, okay, so I really like to draw. That is a possibility. But since I was trying to to learn a little bit about character art, I realized that it would be like hard as hell. Mm -hmm. And I was, okay, so maybe this can be my hobby. Mm. And then I can do marketing for a living because look at this guy is successful in marketing, like extremely successful. And I know him and I could use him as a pathway to become successful mm -hmm. in advertising. Yeah. And so in the first semester of 2015, that's when I was in my, this is just a hobby. Our thing will be just a hobby. Yeah. I want to do marketing. Mm -hmm. And I think he, around May of 2015, this teacher that I was like trying to go after and admiring mm -hmm. and like really create a connection. He showed me that he also liked art. Hmm. He was a painter as like he was a hobbyist painter mm -hmm. and he showed me one of his paintings and dude, 
that painting was awesome. I can't even remember exactly what it was. I know that <laughs> I was impacted by how good it was, right? Yeah, sure. And that made me think, um, well, do I want to be that guy? Like, do I really want to be that guy? Oh, that that's guy interesting. That, that kind of like you're like, interesting. You like, he became a human at that point. He stopped being this ideal of like the best of both of like making the money with marketing, but then having this like almost like sad wasted potential because if it's so good it like kind of breaks your heart a bit to see it not being utilized or you know like not really doing it. how interesting that's kind of funny <laughs> and also the fact that it's like wow it was so impactful i don't remember what it was though it's like oh must not have been that impactful but <laughs> but no, i no, no, i get like, that i, I get that that makes sense it's just funny. the emotion right it's yeah not yeah exactly you remember the, the emotions more so than you remember the actual the actual thing so i'm i'm, I'm with you that's <laughs> um well at that point i was really struggling with how much i needed to study for marketing huh yeah because well i wanted to be good at it too right sure it's not of like course. i was not giving it a real shot at yeah, it yeah, yeah. while i was thinking about so i was like well art is hard as fuck marketing <laughs> is hard as fuck yeah if, if anything is hard i might as well do the thing that i truly like love and yeah. like, struggle for that instead of like struggling for both at like the same time right yeah no that's that's a great point that's a that's really hard right because like if this is really hard and i'm busting my balls for something i don't really want then why don't i just butt my butt my balls why don't i just bust my balls for what i do want why don't i just actually like i like yeah i feel like that that's like a pivotal moment where you're like i'm gonna be happy either way i'm gonna be i'm not going to enjoy this necessarily so then it basically comes down to what payout am i going to enjoy the most and in moments like that when it's like hard and sucky i feel like that it's easier to go with your heart than it is to go well, actually i guess it depends on the person to go with your heart than it is to go with the logical reason because you could have been like okay this sucks but you know what sucks more being poor right and then you could have you could have gone the other way and been like even though this sucks being poor would suck more and then you have a fear-based decision and stick with marketing because you know you don't think you'd be able to make it as an artist and it's not worth that effort so the fact that you had the courage to look at that choice and decide to yellow it says a lot um and i think that that's probably at least in the story so far like probably the most defining action so far because you could have you could have I mean, yeah, seeing that it sucks, like, a lot of people could have just been depressed at that point. Because it's like, this, like, this blows. Like, I thought that marketing I could just do and pay my bills, but if I'm actually going to do marketing, I have to put a lot of work into it. it was, but I don't, and they would just, like, could just get, like, depressed and sad. Because, but you didn't. Just big dick energy. Just like, fine, I'll just do art then. And you just turn around and do it. <laughs> Well, I, I wish it was that easy, right? Because the price comes in later. Oh, the sure. Pay for those decisions. Yeah. But at the, in the moment, it was like actually decent because it, look, it will seem strange, right? But up to that point, I never actually had to put effort in, into anything. Huh. I think that the yeah. reason why I quit um, computer science was because I didn't know how to put effort into stuff mm. during my years in school, right? Yeah. Every arts that you like talk to, they yep. are, oh, I went to art because everything was hard and I was bad at everything. So art was the only thing that I was good at. Sure. And look, it's not like being big headed, but in school, to me, it was completely the opposite. Every subject was like either a, a A or like A plus, you know, mm -hmm. and you, you are kind of like mesmerized by the, the possibilities, I yeah. think, yeah. at that point, because, okay, I can go anywhere. Which is, in my opinion, way harder than like I only have this path because everything else like I suck at. Sure. No, that's that's a really interesting point. I feel like that. I honestly, we're not going to go on a tangent. All right, we're not going to. But I just want to bring up the parallel that I feel like that that point that you bring up of people doing what's easy and that they like, like that's the dream, right? That's what everybody wants. I wanna do this thing that I'm good at that's easy for me that makes me money, right? That's the dream, that's what people wanna do. And I feel like because of that, 
in an early age, people just go for the things that they're naturally kind of gifted at, which makes sense. I don't have any qualms with that. But I feel like that that's a lot of reasons why we see a bunch of like, especially younger kids wanting to be like esports stars. Like, oh, I play video games. I'll just like be a pro streamer or I'll be, you know, I'll just join an LCS team or, you know, whatever. Um, but then once you like hit that wall, like, you know, in, in competitive game, once you hit like that top 1%, once you hit diamond and you're like, oh, crap, video games are like playing at this top level is actually hard and not just playing a game for fun or like for you, like once you once you hit, you know, once an industry pro tells you your art looks like garbage and you're like, oh, I'm actually going to have to like grind like you're like once that once that natural talent runs out, I feel like is like the wake up call. And when people really like I feel like when they wake up and like not just have this pie in the sky fantasy of, yeah, I'm just going to waltz through life and make a bunch of money and have fun the whole way. And it's like, yeah, it's a it's a it's a wake up call for sure. Like, for sure. Well, yeah. And also, um, I think it's what differentiates people that actually want it. You know, it's, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a bad thing. Right. It's yeah, just I agree. If you if you have that, uh, real, if you realize that and you still want to make that decision, mm -hmm. then I think you know you are on the right path, right? I agree. At the moment that you snap to the to the wake up of this is going to be hard, but mm -hmm. I'm up to it. Yeah. That's when things change, I think. I agree. And that ties very well to, to that point in life where I decided to do art. Yeah. Because, well, I have a computer that sucked. Like it had, I don't know, two gigs of RAM. It oh, yeah. Run Photoshop yeah. Very well. yeah. It was this 13 inch, like, um, notebook and mm. i didn't had a wacom i didn't know they existed or anything yeah so i just grabbed a sketchbook mm -hmm. a couple of pens i downloaded a version of how to draw that had only up to the third chapter <laughs> and I, I the free pdf you <laughs> found on like the third page of google <laughs> the free pdf right? oh yeah, yeah the free the free <laughs> trial yeah for sure yeah just bootstrapping but your right. way over here all right keep going i see you <laughs> Yeah, and then I, like I, I started post daily on Instagram, mm -hmm. and by the end of that year, this was like in June 2015. By the end of the year, I got like the actual books. So mm -hmm. now I'm a legal. Oh, user, perfect! Yeah, yeah. You books. just you just borrowed it. Yeah, no, for sure. That's like every what every uh, manga reader on the internet does. They'll they'll buy it for the local release for sure. Like definitely, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but you actually also, follow like, through. <laughs> I, I really wanted the. The knowledge you know oh i know i'm teasing and i'm teasing it's fine it's fine okay so you got so you got this book and i studied them for about like making the story a little bit shorter i studied them for the next the rest of my life <laughs> and now you're that's here great perfect it. done easy <laughs> done. buy those books. no that's not the case at all like i started posting on instagram and then this guy i don't know out of the blue right a couple of months later mm -hmm. because i was posting every day Sure. I, I was like in advertising school and we were studying social media mm. and well what at that time what was really important was like posting daily so i was mm. like okay to, to help me like keep my my habit on track i'll make sure that i have to post every single day mm. at least one drawing yeah and i kept that habit for like i don't know two years three years maybe mm. and that helped me like keep continuing um developing my skills and actually studying and creating some connections and then a guy approached me like a couple of months later to give me some pointers like hey um you're kind of making this mistake a lot why don't you it turns out that that guy was already like a very big professional artist who was just throwing at me like a bone of a little nugget of information yeah know? what a homie and I found those nuggets like all the way throughout, right? People yeah. that were willing to give you actually free information yeah. about the thing that you wanted to, to do. So I was kind of like, you know, those cartoons where, where the main character is chasing like that candy line yeah, and they fall into a trap. Well, I fall, fell into like the art trap. So because they kept me feeding information and well, I kept studying and i don't really know where to go from from there because turns out that i just never stopped that's yeah. the thing right well let me ask and... you a couple of questions um from that how from the time it took you to 
okay, when you when you pulled yourself up by your bootstraps and you're like, you know what, F this, I'm just going to like fall to the wall. I'm going to do art for sure. And he started posting every day, right? One, how much would you credit your eventual success and, you know, making it as an artist to your decision to post every day on social media, like on Instagram? Like how much, how much do you value that? And do you think that that's replicable today? If somebody were in your shoes, it's 2021 and they just decided, you know what? Balls deep. I'm going to, I'm going to do art. Like, do you think that what you did is directly transferable of, and you would advise people to just start a daily grind and post on Instagram every day? Or do you think that was, you know, Instagram was a different time. That was what, 2016, that was five years ago. Social media was a lot younger then. Like what, how much do you attribute your social media habits on Instagram posting, getting you to where you are now? Or was that just more like a fun okay. tidbit? So no, no, I think that was extremely important for my career. But mm -hmm. at the same time, social media was a different beast back then. Yep. And totally. people wanted to see other things. I think it was easier to connect with people through social media, right? Because yeah. I got in touch with a lot of big artists that I don't think uh, it's are, are as easily accessible nowadays yeah. through Instagram, as an example. But I think that what was crucial actually about my social media interactions was the connections. So yeah. it's not this the platform itself, but the it's, connections. I think you have to, yeah. I think you have to find con ways to connect with people that are higher up in the food chain than you yeah. are. So and then today in like, 2021, then how would you if Insta so everything's different? Algorithm changes on Instagram yes, yes. all the time. Twitter yeah. has presence in the United States getting blocked. Like everything is a mess. Every like. There's art station that exists, right? Like if, if if the importance and the true value comes from finding people to give you advice and making those basically making those connections, making that networking connection, which when you're an artist and likely an introvert can be hard. What would you recommend for people to do now in what February of 2021? Um, I think that well, there are two, two sides of it, right? First mm -hmm. of all, there's the grind. I think you should like draw at least daily. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really matter how much time you spend on it because like for the first year and a half, I was still finishing my degree because I actually got to finish it. And I, I had like some days I had 20 minutes to draw. Yeah. So I, you'd, I would use those 20 minutes to draw. You know, I was commuting like at least two hours a day. Yeah. On, on a good day, it was two hours. On a bad day, it was more. I was spending Jeez. a lot of time in college. I had to do my my what's it called the the final project of college right? yeah that your capstone took like a a real big time of out of my daily practice but that the first thing is never stop drawing and try to do that daily as much mm. as you can and so the, the habit part of it is, just make a habit yeah, and stick I, with it and even if it's a little bit i just want to emphasize that like the connections they are there to give you opportunities mm -hmm. but you need to deserve those opportunities so the, mm. the deserve aspect comes from get the, the grind you know get them roast them <laughs> dude it's, it's, it's oh call them out harsh, right? no no that's great that's I, I i really respect and admire you for saying that because like what's that what's that famous phrase what like luck is preparation meets opportunity right i've seen that on like a couple places well but every time that i see i think i was very lucky you know when i look back but at the yeah. same time i think that that phrase proves really like a reality because when i was lucky enough to get an opportunity mm -hmm. i i think i took advantage of it you know yeah and not, it's really not trying to, to uh think i was like awesome or amazing or anything out of the ordinary sure. it's just that if you train yourself to perceive those like to really think about those lucky moments yeah i think when they happen, you'll be like jumping on them as if it was the last thing like on earth, right? Because it might be like, you know, I think, I think that's it great. Be. Like you like have how, to. Dude, how would I have met a comic book su successful artist working at Marvel mm -hmm. without like knowing anything about art? Yeah. Right. It's of course that was luck, man. It was yeah. like sheer luck. I w happened to be in the good graces of a good teacher. Yeah. And he happened to like me enough to to present me to someone else, right? Yeah. And, but then, okay, but so then, then, so on Instagram, you find you found these connections, and they and they they gave you like artistic advice, whatever. Hey, change yeah. this. Hey, perspective wrongs that. Focus on this instead. Whatever, whatever. 
nugget 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 wrong all the time <laughs> sure right just draw boxes like me forever just kidding don't do that so you're what happened like when of it like what like we, we, we joke we say one thing led to another but like like actually what happened then so you're posting okay. every day you so people various um, people have reached out to you did one of those people offer you a job did was there did did their right, nuggets so, lead you to apply for a job somewhere else all right so just before i dive into like the step-by-step -step thing that happened mm -hmm. i just want to like tell people that if they want to create those connections nowadays i think that uh, communities on discord are very good to do that mm. i think but what i've noticed is that the community community aspect it's so big that it's hard to create actual connections with people like inside of those chats yeah. so if there's someone out there that you really like want to talk to send them a dm or like ask if you want if you can like talk with them on a personal chat or something like that because that will help you out more they will be able to understand your situation and give you proper advice because that was like the difference that it made for me right yeah people were understanding where i was at and yeah. giving me the advice that i needed at that moment so i didn't like got extremely lost as i think my a lot of people might get nowadays like i get get lost when i'm learning new skills mm. because of the amount of information that's out there nowadays yeah so but the way that it happened to me was i started drawing and then like six months later a guy approached me and asked if i wanted to be in an indie video game project with him mm. And well, to be completely honest with you, it was not the best opportunity, right? I yeah. was working basically for free, but in my mind, it was like, oh my God, they want me for their project. I, I any, any chance that I got, I would jump into that. Sure. And then I jumped from like small job to small job. And when I say small, it's like extremely small, not like even minimum wage kind of thing, right? Hmm. And those smaller jobs they helped me to keep uh, feeding this dream and studying like on the side at the same time yeah so you were doing these uh, you're you doing this in school you were you were doing small yeah penny projects yeah. basically exactly basically just portfolio projects to the point where money wasn't even the primary motivation but just having something to show that you did that shipped was yeah, you know I having was, experience um, hungry for a job right at yeah. that point like my girlfriend she was already like working yeah and i felt like i i was like holding us back if that makes sense no totally that social pressure is huge that that makes a ton of sense yeah especially there there's a whole bunch of dynamics involved with that i get that that makes sense so yeah, then like life happens you know like you, you can't stop the things that are pertain to life from happening just because you have this dream so yeah. you have to manage the way that you deal with it inside of your own head and turns out that like she was amazing with me and she kept me like kept me motivated and she made a lot of sacrifices as well to like in order for me to be able to chase my dream yeah and i think that was crucial as well right if you are your your family supporting you I think yeah. it's, I, I don't want to say like extremely necessary because I know that some people are not supported, Yeah. but I, I won't say like, it's a huge help because I, then you yeah. have a part of your life that is like not to be worried about. Yeah. I think that, I definitely think that you, I think everybody needs support. Humans need community, right? Like you can't, you nope, nobody can be a Sasuke. Not even Sasuke could be Sasuke and he became friends with Naruto at the end. So like nobody can really be all alone and not be negatively impacted by it like we're like biologically like wired for communication and connection and like community um but i think that like something that's interesting that that about your story that i haven't done is that i feel like and maybe this is generalization but i feel like that there's a lot of people who've gotten emails or offers from some pretty sketch people asking them to be involved on their project and it's typically in my experience the people who email you they feel this need to be extra confident and be extra like you know to pitch it and spin it to make it sound like that this is the coolest thing ever and they have all this potential and it's so great and so cool and they're like super high on themselves but then when you actually look into the project it's like kind of cringe and like really indie and like they're like desperate right um and i feel like for me my cynicism yeah, is just clients. exactly and i knew as soon as you said that 
I that's I knew exactly what kind of emails and like what kind of DMs you were getting because I've gotten those too, and I've always been like, yeah, no, <laughs> uh, well, no. To be honest with you, <laughs> I think that um, I do think that you were right on your approach, right? And not because of the money or how small is the project. I think that what I did wrong was not looking to the value that the project would bring me, mm -hmm. because. In, look, this is my opinion, and I know that it's a hot topic for some people, yeah. but I don't think that working for free is that bad. I think that you mm. should work for value. If that yeah. value comes in form of money or it comes, comes in form of learning or contacts or whatever it is. Yeah. Right? No, let's let's talk about value, that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, the thing is, like, what is the value that that proposal is giving you? Mm-hmm. Like if let's say um, Craig Mullins come up to me and he say, "Hey, do you want to internship for me, like for free?" I mean, yes, it's Craig course, Mullins. Man, like, <laughs> like, yeah. So you you see, like, you can be as hard as you want into the never work for free, and then when an opportunity like that opens up to you, you clearly show your priorities. You clearly show that you are not after money; you are after value. Yeah. Right? So. If you receive those proposals, I do think that you should think about the value that they are giving you. And I don't think that I received enough value. But at the same time, I think that um, it was a good experience to have to learn about this value thing. Right? Yeah. Because, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask you, I, I completely agree with you that the, the root issue of the question of don't work for free is don't undervalue yourself. And they, they, they say that sentence in the same t viral tweet thread or meme or whatever of up your prices, don't work for free, you know, rise up, you, you know, oppress lowly, low confidence artists, you know, be, em be emboldened by your genius. And it's like, shut up. <laughs> like, I don't have anything wrong with that. Confidence is great. Um, and I th again, not like I don't disagree with with that mindset of of, you know, don't be mowed over and you know bend over for people who want to spend fifty dollars for a riot skin level commission because the art as every, every artist knows that it's not respected people ask you for for a D, D sexy commission and they want to pay you 75 bucks for a full body like riot skin and they think they're being generous and it's like well, you can shove that I'll out your butthole you know. like <laughs> It's... I'll have you know that 75 bucks was a lot of money compared to what they were paying me back then, man. Oh, oh I know. Oh, like I know. I know. 75 bucks was awesome. If I could get that job, I would jump into it. But the thing is, I, it's not that I disagree with the like go get it and up your price and everything mindset. It's just that I think you should be re realistic with yourself and think if that applies to you or not. Right. Yeah, I think that I think that this is and this this is what I wanted to talk about. This is the conversation that I wanted to have with you is that I feel like that and this this I feel like it's predatory fundamentally. I feel like that the value argument is what predators use to take advantage of low confidence workers. Not just artists, but in general. Of you know, think of the opportunity, think of the exposure, think of the you know whatever, etc., etc., etc. Um and I feel like that there are times, like you said, where the value of working for a lower rate outweighs the fact that the rate is lower. But I think that it, that requires discernment and like wisdom and knowledge to know when those opportunities are. And I think that I wanted to talk with you and ask your opinion on what kind of, of how, if we could kind of qualitatively give some like red flags or keywords so that people could potentially get a better framework for knowing when like, it might be worth it to work actually practical advice yeah right? exactly and i guess i would just want to start throw my hat in the ring of this and there is that if the work that you're being asked to do is something that you would not be ashamed to include in a portfolio when applying for a job that uniquely satisfies a criteria that you need for your portfolio if you need something stylized if you need something photo real if you need a prop if you need whatever and this project needs that i think that that right there might be a reason to do it um but the uh, counter argument for that really could just draw it on your own you could draw your own props you could draw your own things you don't have to do that for somebody else um but i guess for me the biggest the biggest thing for me that would make me consider an opportunity like that is if i think 
there is a reasonable chance for this crappy project to ship within a short amount of time. Not like a week, but you know, like half a year. Like if this is if this can ship, I think that that is what would interest me the most because everybody and their mom mm -hmm. has a bunch of projects that they don't finish that they, you know, even artists themselves, they move on too soon. And if you, if the project never ships, you feel like you waste your time outside of the assets. Maybe you make for that specific project, which could have that value that you need if it's filling that hole in your portfolio. But I think the biggest thing is that if it ships, you can then say that you were on a shipped project. And you can talk about that in interviews of the collaboration and the compromises and the communication that takes with the team and this, that, and the other thing, um, you know, and learning what it means mm -hmm. to to work with other people. I think that for me is probably would be my biggest indicator is if the if what that crappy, terrible flash game, you know, whatever, whatever the cringe pitch is, if you think it could actually ship within like, what, three to six months. Yeah, I think you actually gave pretty good advice. I don't know if like the deadline of three to six months, it's like... Um, long enough some projects do take longer even in indie projects right yeah but i think that uh, other than that because i really like your advice and think, like thinking about how this is a really good way to think of the value that the project is like giving you back right if that is the person like is asking for your art either for free or for very low and they don't want you to share it anywhere and they like want to hold every right to it and this this kind of stuff it's already a red flag yeah but i do like to have a and that's something that i did not have back then but i think like again if you create those connections you might have that but people to ask for advice right because yeah. they will be able to look at it without the emotion yeah and they will give you the the like the reality of it of hey man like this is too sketchy you know this is too much to actually believe it will be a successful project Mm. And I understand that you want to do that, but look, you if you are going to work on something that will not bring any benefit to you, then it's worthwhile to just let it go and work on your portfolio for like on your own time. Yeah. Assuming that you would be working for the same amount of time with the same enthusiasm, with like actually working on your portfolio. Because what I see a lot of the time is, is that if there's someone whipping their back to work, people will work way more mm -hmm. than like what they would if they were um, on their own yeah. and having to work on their portfolio, right? You see people that talk about, oh, I'm working on my portfolio and they are like all the time online in social media, posting stories every 10 minutes. And okay, so what kind of work are you doing then? Yeah, That's how you were working on portfolio. I know it's like too real, right? And it's too harsh on people. But Not at I all. think you, no you should have that that thing of keeping yourself accountable, even if you're not um, being held accountable by other people. Yeah, I think right? that... It's keeping yourself on a leash. I agree. And I feel like that being a part of a team could do that. But I think I think that the primary problem of, of working on a team or responding to those DMs and stuff that you did um, is I think is that you have to respect the person who's pinging you um because otherwise you're not going to want to take their notes they're, you're not going to want to accommodate their vision you're not like right like i feel like and i feel like artists especially when it comes to like artistic vision have a lot of pride and a lot of like i know best i'm the artist whatever whatever and i feel like that one of the hardest things to do of joining a team is putting your pride to the side but then knowing when it's when you shouldn't knowing when somebody isn't worth you know putting your pride aside for like if you're in the right so i feel like that and i'm curious what your number is in my experience of all the dms of people asking you to join or this opportunity or like even like sponsored brands like advertise my thing on your channel and i'll give you like xyz like out of those like cold emails i would probably ignore eight to nine out of ten of those what would your number be for like from like the percentage of projects in hindsight now that you think would can add value to you versus something that you think that if you have the drive and motivation enough to grind that you could add that value yourself uh, um, okay i'm not sure if i follow the question like what's the percentile that would actually uh, be worthwhile for me yeah i'm saying that like if you could if looking back in hindsight out of out of all the gigs that you took how many of them do you would you have not taken now 
or more generally, if you still get pings today, how many of those pings are like not worth it and like kind of cringe? Okay, so um, I, I don't think I ever ignored someone. Oh wow, hundred percent like, accept rate right off the bat. But I no no that's not the point. Like I always gave them um, rope, right? Mm. In the sense of like to hang, for them to hang themselves. That's the, the in the sense like okay. You got my attention, right? Now convince me to work on your project. And some people managed to do that. And out of the ones that I actually ended up working for, almost all of them were good in a general sense. There were a couple of them that like, in hindsight, they did not offer me enough value. But at the same time, I was I managed to work with some awesome like small businesses where I was able to connect way more to the person that like um, was the owner of the project, right? Mm. And because the reality of it is if you're not an artist and you are not in this field and you need someone to do something for you and you don't know where to find them, you will end up looking into Instagram, you will end up looking like in social media and yeah. finding a guy that kind of knows how to draw something that, that's kind of similar to what you think you need. Yeah. And you will reach out to them. And if you really want to do a good project, right? The The owner of the project really wants to be a good thing at the end, they will like give you value and and actually like both of you should work together in order for the project to be successful instead of like me wanting the art to be successful or the person wanting their vision only, right? When you mm -hmm. find that combination of both of you looking to the final result to be good, I found that those projects are the ones that are good. But usually that comes after a long talk with the person, right? If yeah. you talk with them, like, and I'm I'm saying it seriously, like long, um, you are talking to them for a week now and they're still like answering all of your questions in order for you to be sure of what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. That's a good point to like, okay, this person is serious about this. And then if they're like, oh, I, I need you to start tomorrow. Can you do like 300 drawings in a week? Can you, this kind of thing, right? Where it's yeah. always rushed and they're overly enthusiastic that's that's yeah. when the they're typically students don't really come out yeah those are those are typically like teenagers or like 20 yeah. year olds um or people that are trying to take advantage right or people are trying to take advantage like really yeah. take advantage yeah. because they try to sound enthusiastic because then they will know that you like oh if i show that i'm confident they will also like believe in me no matter what yeah and grab those students it sounds like though that and i i agree with you it sounds like that a big piece of advice that you would offer people would be on top of your own studies that being able to put yourself out there and work on work on gigs and just get the exposure and get the network and the connections has substantial value and that you I mean that, that's kind of how you got to where you are today by doing your due diligence to really make sure that a project could give that value to you even if it is primarily for connections in an industry that you're interested in or potentially having more you know experience to show working with a group of people like yeah it sound, i do and, think that yeah. you were right on that it's a that's why I focus on value so much, you know, because if you only focus on money, you will let go of opportunities that could be awesome to work on. And there, there is work out there that I could never present to the world, right? Mm -hmm. And that, like, I don't think matches what I want right now in my career, so I don't show it off. Yeah. Or uh, the drawings that I did were, like, so bad because I was bad at the time, but yeah. it was the best thing that the person could, could afford, and it really helped the project. <laughs> Dude, I will never show them, but they gave me so much experience and so much like um, knowledge of how to deal with clients, how to deal with people that want the project, how to convince the clients that your idea is actually for their good and not like you push shoving your opinion down their throat. Yeah. And that kind of knowledge, like how else would you find that? I think that's one of the values of school, right? Yeah. That people quickly dismiss nowadays and look... I know there are positives and negatives about schooling, right? Prices, yeah. a lot of them. But I did not have money. So the school that I learned it with mm -hmm. was those small gigs, right? Yeah. That's the thing. Do you think... 
knowing that the value that working on non sketchy, you know, indie gigs has on your development as an artist, where would you recommend people in 2021 be able to get those gigs? Like, I mean, Fiverr is a thing. You did Instagram. Twitter DMs tend to get a lot of success. Like, if somebody's trying to get some experience that, you know, even even if it's just for that classic, you know, two to three years experience needed for any entry level job anywhere, right? If people are looking for an experience to either get a little bit of money or, you know, better themselves as an artist, how would you recommend that they start? Mm. All of the above would be a way to say it. <laughs> like, be everywhere, right? And I would look for small pro projects in a sense of look for indie studios either in your region or where you want to work at. Um, they are developing like small mobile projects or that kind of thing that is actually made by small teams and they could use a helping hand. Um, look for Kickstarter people that like made, I don't know, five successful Kickstarter campaigns, DM them and they, hey, um, I'm an artist, could, and of course there are many fields of Kickstarter, right? Yeah. But um, you could find one of them that actually uses artwork. Hmm. I don't know, uh, a deck of cards, um, a collectible kind of Kickstarter campaign and find someone that's actually reliable on that because chances are that they have those artists that work for them all the time, mm. right? And you could either reach out and ask if they need a helping hand on the next project because if they are keeping Kickstarters all the time, chances are that that's how they made their living. Yeah. So, and they are reliable enough in order for you to trust that, okay, the next project, it's not a scam, right? They did yeah. this like a hundred times. It's not the next one that will pay you. Yeah. And you either ask like if they want a helping hand or if you could reach out to their artist and talk with them and then create those connections. And look, there, there's no like better place to find um, other arts than internet and people that need it, right? So yeah. advertise yourself as well. Like, hey, I'm looking for something. Right, yeah. post on your stories or something like that, or I'm open for commissions or whatever it is that you can get your hands on for people to reach out to you and tell them if they need something. And then you can evaluate if that opportunity is good for you, for yeah. real. That's good, right? I don't want people to just like jump on anything without analyzing it first. Yeah. But at the same time, don't shy away from like, small people small indie clients man look they're small businesses they need art right yeah they cannot afford paying a hundred hours a hundred dollars an hour for everyone yeah. yeah do they deserve to to get to receive good artwork look for um i don't know charity services right they cannot pay for art because their money is going through what they do like i did a lot of that actually there's i can't remember the website man but people can look up some website that unites like arts and businesses, um, non-profit businesses that need artwork hmm. and you can help them out. And then you are doing a good thing for the world. Yeah. And at the same time, developing your skills, learning how to be art directed, yeah. even if the person is not an art director. Now, the question I have is that if we're, if we're, if you're saying that people should, should not be afraid to take the, the cheaper gigs, the, the cringy gigs, the ones that they might normally think that they're above or they're better than and they should be able you know to do something better because their sites are set on you know some triple a game studio you know their dream um what would you like at the end of the day money's money right bills need to be paid and i feel like that the advice that that you're talking about is hard to do if they if the entirety of their income is doing the techniques and advices that we're talking about. But we're like, do you think that this mindset is sustainable? For, like, if you're only doing this, do you think you could pay the bills? Or do you think that this is something that you would do while you were living at home? Or, you know, while you had another job that could actually pay your bills and you're doing this on the side until you can land a bigger, more reputable, you know, bigger payout client? Do you think that this is something that you could string enough of these together to actually make a living? Um, or is this something that 
would like help you improve more, but isn't necessarily something that could be sustainable for you to like actually. That's an like, excellent point, actually. I think that I was lucky enough to be able to get those and not rely on like my living to be dependent on that. Yeah. And I know that some people are not. I think that advice is still um, valuable. But then you got to think that if you if you need to make a living doing other things, right? Yeah. And then it's, look, there are two things that I need to say. Like, if you're doing your living, making your living out of other things, try to do that uh, work well, too, right? While you're there. Don't do it, like, without caring. Yeah. Because I think that's what creates poor service out there. Yeah. But the, you are still able to make time for art, I think. Even if it's, like... 30 minutes a day and if you're doing it 30 minutes a day chances are that in a real in a consistent way chances are that you will get to a point where people are offering you those opportunities and then if you're not like getting opportunities that are actually worthwhile in terms of money put them like either on the weekends or on your off day mm. and make deals with those people and say okay i will i'm available to work but only on weekends and you don't need to tell them that like oh i'm only available on weekends because i actually have a day job right yeah they can think that you have an actual like nine to five art job and you are only available yeah on you don't weekends. you don't have to tell them you don't have to tell them yeah, like, like <laughs> you, you dude you don't really need to point out and that actually can help you out in the sense that okay i'm not always available and then you can be like on your social media always like i'm uh, uh, open commissions closed commissions or open to work uh, like i don't have time for work right now and people might think that you are actually like so busy that everyone wants your art yeah but but i think yeah i think that's a good distinction a then yeah yeah but also like don't feel bad that you need to make a living out of other things yeah right Look, life, it's not easy. And I am in a very lucky position where I had people that supported me. Yeah. Including like, for dude, for a few years, my girlfriend would pay out our dinners every time that we go out, you know. Yeah. And we ha always had this very clearly between us. It was not a burden on her, right? Yeah. And I was always like trying to not um, demand too much. Yeah. But it was her support towards me. And every time that I would get any kind of money, yep. it was like our money, right? And yep. hers was always our money. And I think that this mm, union kind of union would be the word. I don't know. This yep. partnership, this mm -hmm. companionship would is what actually played a big role in making me like be able to do this for a living. And yeah. then it got to a point where thankfully like bigger opportunities started showing up and eventually everything like seems promising enough to pay itself off you know yeah but i, I don't want to to make it look like the sacrifice was only on me yeah no of course not Actually, no but i think that yeah. i think that it's a really good di distinction and clarification to say that you know do the smaller paying jobs to get the experience and to get the value even if that mo value isn't necessarily monetary but then to also recognize that if you have no other job, if you have no way to make the bills, at the end of the day, the unfortunate reality is it's a lot easier to make money not doing art than it is to do art. So as sucky as it might be, your best course of action to, you know, the fastest route to get to be a full time artist could be to get a side job that's not art that would allow you to take on these opportunities that don't pay as much that would give you value in developing your skills and networking that could then get you the full-time art job. Um, but that yeah. if you limit yourself I, to only doing these smaller gigs, it might, it might not be financially sustainable. It might be, but it sounds yeah, like that, but it's kind of hard. It's good to understand that like you, you were a waiter for a while, right? Yep. And that job, I think it was actually too taxing on you. In order for you to be productive on the other, on like the rest of your time, yeah. So the day job that you find actually needs to be something that doesn't um, get in the way yep. of what you are actually trying to do. It's not shameful. Like there's no shame in sustaining yourself and getting a job and working like day like nine to five on sustaining yourself and yep. keeping like food on the table mm -hmm. and. and 
too many people talk as if that was like a no factor, right? That, yeah. oh, you should never do that. No, man, like do your day job. Like what's the matter with that? Yeah. And do that well enough for people to like you, right? Yeah. And do it, be happy with that and try to get value out of it because whether you like it or not, every job has a value. You'll be dealing with people most likely. Yep. In any job. So you learn how to deal with people then. I, I worked on some advertising agent agencies, right? Yeah. I tried my hand at that as well. Mm -hmm. And look, when I was in the second year of college, mm -hmm. I still didn't know that uh, I wanted to do concept art, but I went to work into a place that was to sell like uh, dog food. And I was the only advertising guy in there. Mm. And I needed to do like um, internet sales kind of thing. Yeah. And it sucked, right? But look, I wanted a job, right? The thing is, I wanted experience at that moment. Yeah. The job itself is not important. The money was good. So why wouldn't you do that? Yeah. Is it too real to say that people need to make a living? That I'm not like a rich kid in California trying to like do this and paying hundred thousand uh, dollars a month for my college degree in art for me to throw it away afterwards no yeah man. i'm hustling my butt at night with the only two books that i could afford as much as i can and on the rest of my time that's when life actually happens and we got to like put food on the table and make everything yeah it sounds like that the big theme is that i feel like that a lot of artists could potentially see having a day job is beneath them and that they would fail if they did that and it would be a sign of like not making it or not being as successful of their as their peers if they have to get a regular non-art job to pay the bills um and that by potentially broadening your horizons to see that there are valuable skills that you can learn that would help you as an artist that are more than just money or working at riot or that triple a studio or you know, whatever that is, that could actually help you become a full-time artist faster than you think and better than you think too. So that there's more value out there than just making money. Yeah. I mean, this is a skill-based uh, profession, right? And there is no substitute to time when you need to learn skill. So it will take time. And if you die before the time arrives, what's the point, right? Because yep. we're starved, because we're too prideful to like, not work on any other thing yep so definitely well andre thanks so much for sharing your story that's super exciting is there anything that you would want to plug or share for some final words before we close mm, i would advise people to look into art sharing which is like our own podcast me adrian and dom we actually talk about a lot of different subjects inside of the art uh sphere i would say mm. we tend to invite people that are from sort of like the fringes so they give different perspectives on this world mm. and well turns out that they are actually amazing artists and i'm following my own advice of surrounding myself with people that i think are better than me so yeah i think that light share it's a, it's a positive force in the world all right yeah no we'll have the we'll have the light share link down below um awesome Sweet. And also your Instagram as well. The the hero of your story. Man, if only Instagram was the same today as it was back in like 2015. Could you imagine how much better the world would be? It was it was so easy. Oh it's man. Uh, it yeah. was one of the lucky moments that I talk about, right? Jeez. Oh, social media. That'll be another topic. We'll just talk about social media all day on another episode. Well, anyway, thanks so much. <laughs> um again, if you want to help determine future podcast topics, check out the Patreon. Um Thanks so much for listening. Hope this helped you. Talk to you guys later.